So, so uh, but you know, when, when, when someone asks me, well, how did, you, how did you end up here? How did you get here? They're really talking about what was the moment when I decided to make music my, my life, my profession? Um, and that's a tougher question to answer because it's more like a series of decisions rather than one moment where I said, you know what, I think this is going to be my career. You know, this is going to be how I make my living. This is going to be how I provide for myself and my family throughout my life. This is a really smart move. <laughs> and, you know, if the old joke is, you know, what's the difference between a fiddle player and a large pepperoni pizza? Pizza will feed a family of four. <laughs> but anyway, um, but when I think back about this, I, I, I realize there are moments that seem significant at the time and might have contributed to this notion that I was heading in a direction that might work for me. And I think, uh, particularly when I first started out, I was starting to sing uh, with some friends of mine. who were playing instruments, uh, guitars and mandolins, and they were getting pretty good. And I, I was just beginning, so I was terrible. But we were singing old folk songs and old country songs and Bob Dylan and the Grateful Dead and whatever we, whatever we liked, whatever we thought we might be able to play. And uh, I started, you know, trying to you know, scratch along on the violin. But a moment that I remember, um, my cousin Bob, uh, was the mandolin player, and Bob was actually getting pretty good. And we usually did our little rehearsal sessions at his house, and we were starting to learn old bluegrass songs. And oddly enough, I seemed to have uh, an aptitude for hearing vocal harmonies. So among the three, four, five of us, I was able to put together these three and four part vocal harmonies, <coughs> Uh, that sounded pretty good, you know, that, that, and I'm not sure, you know, why I could do that, but I could. So we learned a lot of old bluegrass songs, and, and we used to do our practicing, our jam sessions, at Bob's house, out in the family room. Now, I have to give you a little bit of context here. Um, my uncle Bob, my mother's brother, was a very funny man, and... Uh, and he had actually played a little bit of jazz guitar when he was young and had a, had a lifelong interest in music. So he would always be home. Uh, he basically enjoyed his cocktail hour every day, which started kind of the minute he walked in the door from work and ended when he lost consciousness some <laughs> hours later. But so Bob would always be in the, in the house, and some Uncle Bob would be in the house, and we'd be out in the family room, you know, playing our songs and singing our songs. And the family had an old basset hound. Uh, named Tally, Tallulah. And so one day, there are maybe five of us sitting around playing these old bluegrass songs, and every time we launch into a three or four part vocal chorus, Tally starts howling along in that bass and out, oh, 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 you know. So here we are, you know, uh, hello, city little inside, I see your side, oh, 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 you know. Uh, let me be your salty dog, or I won't be your man at all. Honey, let me be your salty oh, oh, you know. And we're just cracking up. I mean, it's, it's killing us, but we're, you know, we're hanging in there playing our songs. So this goes on for six or seven songs. And now we start uh, one of our big numbers, Roll in My Sweet Baby's Arms or something. And this, we just charge on into it. And as soon as we hit the first chorus, Tally just launches into this dramatic burst of, of basset hound howling, at which point the door opens up and slams open and my uncle jumps in the room and says, for God's sake, play something the dog doesn't know. <laughs> anyway, 